Good morning, Ecclesia kids. We are excited to learn with you today. Today we're going to learn about a time when a mysterious visitor showed up and talked to some of Jesus' disciples on the road to Emmaus. First, we want to see what you learned last week. We always love it when we open up our email and we see a video or a picture of what you've learned. So keep sending those to kids at ecclesiaeugene.org. Now, let's see what you did last week. I store your word up in my heart, so I won't sin against you. Psalm 119, verse 11, let's sing that one more time. Hey everybody, Teacher Nick. Okay, so, well, before we get started, I'm going to give you a little outline, a little play-by-play -play of what we're going to do today. We're going to do, well, two songs up front, then we'll take a nap, we'll crawl under our covers, we'll get our blankie and our stuffed animal, we'll get our bottle and we'll take a nice little nappy poo. And well, then we'll wake up and we'll do two more songs and we'll be all done and we'll get to do it again next week. Are you with me? Do you guys want to take a little nappy poo? No, you can't do that. You're awake, it's not nap time. It's go time, it's play time. The game is on. We gotta sing two songs up front. We'll do a teaching like we always do. Then we'll do a craft, then we'll do a lesson, and then we'll watch another video. And well, then we'll do two more songs and we'll be all done and you guys will get to go outside and play. It is going to be the best. So. For this first one, we're gonna do this little light of mine. So get them up, 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 up. <sighs> Whoa, that was cool. I gotta get my pick. Pew. All right, we're ready. This little light of mine. Hello, knock, knock. Are you sleeping over there? You gotta be singing. Get them up, get them up, get them up. <laughs> Good job. All right, let's do it. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. I'm gonna let it shine Hide it under a bushel No! I'm gonna let it shine Hide it under a bushel No! I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Don't let Satan <laughs> It out no, that's not how we're supposed to do it. All right, let's try it again. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. <laughs> Awesome job. Okay, but a quick teaching from that song. Here's the deal. We say, hide it under a bushel. No! Here's the deal. Disclaimer. You're only allowed to scream, and I say this all the time, but it's always good to repeat it because sometimes we often forget. You're only allowed to scream no like that during the song. Are you allowed to scream no like that to maybe your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or a friend? Mm, no, not a great idea. But. When you're singing this song, you can sing it loud and proud. All right, that's the disclaimer I had for you. We're gonna do one more song. We'll take a little break and we'll be right back. All right, so for this, well, second one, we are gonna do Jesus Loves Me. So get ready to sing. Oh, man, did I fall asleep? I'm not supposed to be doing that. Oh, man, hey, thanks for waking me up. I don't know what I was thinking. Whew. Well, let's do it. Okay, Jesus loves me. We got it. 
And Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Let me see your muscles! <laughs> <laughs> Good job. And yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Awesome job, everybody. Well, hey, don't go anywhere. We've got a teaching coming right up. Bye, everybody. Hey, Ecclesia kids, I'm Avery. And I'm Brad. And today we are going to be practicing your memory verse for this month, which is John 11, 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And today we're actually gonna play a game. It's Jenga, and if you've ever played Jenga, you know that you're supposed to take out blocks one at a time, stack it on top, and then whoever knocks over the tower loses. But today we kind of have a special little trick because we have the words of the verses and we're gonna try and pull them out one by one in the order in which uh, the verse is said. Okay, should I go first? You can go first. Okay, so I get the easy one. So it's John 11, 25, and that's already on top right there. Okay, now I'm looking for Jesus. Where's Jesus? Oh, there he is. Oh, already kind of tough here. <laughs> cool. Oh, nice. Okay, so Jesus said, do you see? See, it says over on this side. Okay. Jesus. Can I touch the other ones? Yeah. Okay. Setting rules here. You're supposed to only use one hand though. Oh, sorry, sorry. Jesus said. Cool. Okay, Jesus said. Okay, I'm looking for two. Two's right there. Two's right in the middle. Easy one. One at a time. Okay. Jesus said to her. So here's her. Oh no. Oh no. Come out. Okay, Jesus said to her. All right, I'm looking for I, and this one's looking tough because it's right on the end. So no. it's literally just gonna fall over. But Maybe we're gonna- Maybe not. You don't think so? Oh! Okay, well Dang. we didn't make it to the end of the verse, but you guys can do this at home. If you have Jenga, just write one verse on every block and then just shuffle them, and you can use this as a fun way to practice at home. So when the disciples realized that Jesus is alive, they were so happy. And why? Because Jesus' resurrection gives us hope. Jesus taught that all the scriptures point to him. Everything the Bible says about Jesus is true. But where is Jesus now? Jesus ascended to heaven where he is seated at the right hand of the Father. One day, everyone who trusts in him will live with him forever. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. John chapter 11, 25. One more time. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. John chapter 11, 25. Woohoo! We did it! Good job! Hey kids! I've got a pretty fun game we're going to try. Have you ever done shadow puppets in a dark room with a flashlight? Well, I've got a flashlight and a few objects with me. We're going to turn off the lights and I want you to guess what is making the shadow. So here's the first item. Try to guess what it is. Hmm. Do you have an idea? All right, what about 
this one. Hmm. What about this item? All right, my fourth item is this one. Hmm, now I have one kind of tricky one. What do you think that is? All right, and the last one is this one. I think you can tell what that is. Was that easy or hard? A shadow is often a poor representation of the real thing. It doesn't give us much detail like color, texture, or dimension. On our own, it can be hard to know what God wants us to do. We need more information, but God knew that. He gave us his word, the Bible. In today's story, Jesus explains how the whole Bible is really all about him. On the day that Jesus rose from the dead, two of Jesus' disciples were walking to a village called Emmaus. The two disciples were talking about everything that had happened. As they walked, Jesus came and began to walk with them, but the disciples did not recognize him. Jesus asked the disciples, what are you talking about? The disciples stopped walking. They looked sad. One of the disciples, Cleopas, answered, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what happened? What happened? Jesus asked. So they told him, Jesus of Nazareth was a prophet. He was powerful when he acted and spoke before God and all the people. The religious leaders handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death, and they nailed him to a cross. We had hoped he was the one who would set Israel free. Besides, it's the third day since these things happened. Early this morning, some women went to the tomb and did not find Jesus' body. They saw angels who said that Jesus is alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and they too saw that the tomb was empty. Jesus said, you are foolish to not believe what the prophet said. Isn't this what had to happen to the Messiah? Then, beginning with Moses and the prophets, Jesus explained to them what all the scriptures said about him. Jesus and the two disciples arrived at Emmaus and they asked Jesus to stay with them. So Jesus joined them at the dinner table. He took the bread, thanked God for it, and broke it into pieces. Then he gave the pieces to the disciples. Right away, the disciples recognized Jesus, but Jesus immediately disappeared from their sight. The two disciples thought about their walk to Emmaus. They said, when Jesus talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures, didn't our hearts burn with excitement? The disciples immediately left Emmaus and went back to Jerusalem. They found Jesus' 11 disciples and others who gathered with them. They told them what happened. They said, Simon saw Jesus too. Jesus is alive. The whole Bible is about Jesus. When Adam and Eve sinned, God began working out his plan to send Jesus to rescue people from sin. All of the Old Testament points forward to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The time when Jesus would bring God's promised salvation for sinners. I'm getting kind of frustrated because I feel like I'm missing some really important pieces to this puzzle. Like it's just not fitting together. Avery, are you talking about these pieces right here? Yes, where'd you find those? They're just in the other room. How silly of oh. you to leave them in there. Okay, well I bet this will be way easier now. Do you wanna help me? Sure. That probably goes with that guy. Some ice cream. Getting closer. Yeah, this is a lot faster. Got the top. Let's see. Okay, what about these ones? Where do you think those go? 
Go goes here, here, that one goes there. All done. Thanks for your help. Yeah, of course. And so putting together a puzzle is difficult when you can't see the whole picture or you have some pieces missing. And a puzzle can be a lot like our life. Life can seem difficult when we don't see the big picture. But when we know Jesus, he provides the missing pieces. He gives life meaning and purpose. In today's Bible story, two of Jesus' disciples learned how everything is about Jesus. Next, teacher Rebecca is going to talk about some of the stories in the Bible that point us directly to Jesus. When we went through the books of the Bible with teacher Christy earlier this year, we learned that in the 66 books of the Bible, in different sections of history, the law, poetry, and prophets, throughout the whole Bible, every story points to Jesus and the plan for salvation from the very beginning in Genesis to the end in Revelation. In our story today, the disciples on their way to Emmaus met Jesus. They did not recognize him, but Jesus explained to them how every story pointed to how he must die for the sins of the world and be resurrected, how Jesus is our one true hope. So on my whiteboard here, I drew a path like the disciples walked on on their way to Emmaus. On any journey, there's a beginning and an end, just like the word of God we've been given, the Bible has a beginning and an end but everything along the way is important and gets us to the desired destination. In the same way, the stories in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant help us understand who our God is, what He loves, and our great need for a rescuer. So I have a few pictures here that I brought that represent God's plan for salvation and point to Jesus throughout the Old Testament. So the first story is the story of creation. I'm gonna put my picture here at the beginning of the road. The first son, Adam, led all of creation astray and sin entered the world. The faithful son, a new Adam, Jesus, fulfills the promise God made and crushes the serpent. Next, God used Noah to save his family from the waters of the flood and God's judgment towards sin. But there is a greater vessel from which all of the world can be saved, Jesus. In the story of Abraham and Isaac, I have my picture of this ram. Isaac asked his father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Thousands of years later, John the Baptist would answer this question when he said, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Then I have this picture of Moses striking the rock when the water came out. Just as Moses struck the rock in the wilderness for a thirsty people, there is a rock whose living water satisfies forever. The next story I have is about Goliath and David. Now, young King David became a champion for his people. In this story, we see a shadow of a greater king who defeats sin and death, declaring our victory. Next one I have is this picture of Isaiah writing on a scroll. In the long exile of God's people, Isaiah's eyes were opened to a vision of salvation and their eternal destination to the promised land. Until finally, in a humble manger, the hope of the world was born. So now I'm going to turn over the pictures. On the back, of every picture, you can see the shadow of Jesus. Just like on the road to Emmaus, Jesus taught the disciples that all of the stories point to his death and resurrection. Every word of the Bible, every true story is a witness to God's plan for salvation and points to Jesus, the Christ who willingly went to the cross to be the perfect sacrifice that paid for our sin and rose to give us eternal life with him. Did you know that there are over 300 prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament? God told his people over and over that a Messiah was coming who would take away the sins of the world. One of my favorite Bible verses is found in Joshua. 
The verse says, not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Every one of them was fulfilled. When we look back on the prophecies and promises, it looks very clear to us. We can see how Jesus fulfilled those promises down to the very last detail. That causes us to worship God and to praise Him for how amazing and faithful He is. But for the disciples, it wasn't easy for them to see things clearly. They knew the promises of the Old Testament and they were living right at the time those prophecies were being fulfilled. But sometimes it was confusing for them. Have you ever gotten into your car on a very cold morning? What begins to happen to the windows inside the car when it's cold outside and the warmth of your breath is on the inside? The windows start to fog up. You might be able to see out of the glass, but not very clearly. That's how it was for the disciples. They knew that Jesus was the Messiah and they believed in him, but some of the things that were happening weren't very clear to them. After they happened, then they remembered the teaching of the Old Testament and it all started to make sense. Not only did the Bible prophesy about Jesus coming to earth the first time, there are also many, many prophecies about his second coming. That hasn't happened yet. Sometimes we might read those prophecies about Jesus coming back to earth and just like the disciples, we might be confused about what those prophecies mean. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. As you learn more about the Bible, as you learn more about God, you go to church, you listen to advice from those who follow Jesus, then your glass becomes less foggy. But while we're here on earth, the glass will never be totally clear. That won't happen until we're in heaven with Jesus, and then our glass will be clear. We'll understand all kinds of things that were confusing to us when we were here on earth. One thing we can always be certain of is that God's promises never fail. Every single word that God says comes to pass. Hey everyone, so now we are going to play a game. You are going to hear the voice of one of your teachers and I want you to see if you can figure out who it is without seeing them. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Who do you think that was? It was Christy. Okay, let's do the next one. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Did that person sound familiar to you? It was Rebecca. Okay, we've got two more. Who do you think will be next? Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Got any guesses? It was Brad. Okay, and we have one more person for you to guess. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. That was our last person. Who do you think that was? It was Kyle. How did you guys feel when you saw teachers that you recognized? Was it really exciting and really fun to see that you guessed right? In our story today, a few of the disciples were walking to Emmaus and they walked for so long with a man that had joined them, having conversation, they had dinner, and they didn't even realize that it was Jesus. How do you think those disciples felt when they realized the person they had been spending time with was Jesus? How do you think you'll feel when you get to spend time with Jesus? For our craft today, you are going to need to print out our Through the Scriptures craft cards. You'll need scissors, a hole punch, and a piece of string or yarn. Once you have your cards printed out, the first thing you'll need to do is cut out each card. Each card has a verse that shows how the Bible points to Jesus. You can decorate each card by coloring them with markers, colored pencils. You could even use glitter glue or stickers or anything else you have at home. When you are all done decorating your cards, you or your parents can use a hole punch on the top of the cards where there's a little circle. So then you can take a small piece of yarn, about three or four inches, then you'll take your string and try to thread it through your cards. Okay, so then when you have your string through your cards, you can loop it together and tie it in a knot.
Just as that little bit of yarn holds our cards together, Jesus is the thread that ties all of scripture together. Jesus taught that all scripture points to him. Every story in the Bible is really telling one big story, and that story is all about Jesus. So the first card says, I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. That's from Genesis 3.15. Satan came disguised as a snake to the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve chose to sin, to disobey God's word. When the verse says, he will strike your head, the he it is referring to is Jesus. God promised Adam and Eve that one day a Messiah would come and have victory over sin and Satan. The next card says, has a little house on it. It's pretty cute. Your house and kingdom will endure before me forever, and your throne will be established forever. That's from 2 Samuel 7:16. The prophet Nathan spoke this prophecy over King David. But David's kingdom over the people of Israel did end when they went into exile. The verse isn't talking about David's sons ruling over Israel. It is referring to Jesus, the son of Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Jesus is king over everything, and his kingdom will never end. Okay, so the third verse says, But he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. That's from Isaiah 53, 5. Isaiah the prophet was given these words from God to speak to the people of Israel. This is a picture of how Jesus would die to pay the penalty for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. The last verse is from Zechariah 9.9. It says, Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. This verse is from the prophet Zechariah to the people of God. Does it sound familiar to you? If it reminds you of the triumphal entry, when Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, and the people shouted saying, Hosanna, you are exactly right. Hundreds of years before Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, Zechariah wrote these words. Isn't that amazing? Who can you share these stories with this week? You can use these cards to help you share the whole story of scripture and how it all points to Jesus. This week, we're gonna to start to learn question number two of the New City Catechism. But first, do any of you know question number one? Let's say it together. What is our only hope in life or death? That we are not our own, but belong to God. Now, if you've learned question one, then get a video of you saying it and email it to kids at ecclesiaeugene.org. So what do you think is question two? It's a short question, but a very important one. The question is, what is God? And our answer is, God is the creator of everyone and everything. So right here on the whiteboard, we have a picture of a clock. Now, time is something that's very important in our lives. Normally, we get up at a certain time. Maybe you go to school at a certain time or do your schoolwork at a certain time. Maybe you eat lunch at 12 o'clock, or do you have a certain bedtime? Time is important in a lot of things that we do. So when, G no. so when God created the world, it was the beginning of time as we know it. So I'm gonna put on here some of the things that God created. God created you and me. He created our families. So I'm gonna draw a few people. Maybe a dad, a mom, and a child. God created people and people begin at creation in time. And God created animals. Do you have any pets at home? We have a cat, his name is Mr. Pickles. So I'm gonna draw Mr. Pickles' face. God created all kinds of animals, dogs, and even narwhals. Let's see, what else did God create? When you go outside, what do you see? Do you see maybe a lot of trees? God created trees. And what about when you look up in the sky during the day? A 
sun. God created the huge sun. And then what about at night? How about the moon? God created the moon and all of the stars and all of the birds in the sky. And then do you ever go to the ocean? God created all the water and the waves, so we'll put those there. So at the beginning of creation, God created all of these things. But do you know what's outside of time? God is outside of time. God never had a beginning and he never has an end. He is forever and God even created time. He's eternal. So we're going to write that on the bottom. Eternal. That means that no one created God. God has always been and he always will be. He's not bound by time. He's a word called omnipresent. That means he can be everywhere at the same time. So we're going to repeat our question number two. What is God? God is the creator of everyone and everything, even the creator of time. Now let's sing our New City Catechism question two song together. God is the creator of everyone and everything. God is the creator of everyone and everything. Now sing with me. God is the creator of everyone and everything. God is the creator of everyone and everything. Of everyone and everything, of everyone and everything, God is the creator. Of everyone and everything, God is the creator. Of everyone and everything, God is the creator. Of everyone and everything. Good job, guys. Hey everybody, Teacher Nick here. Okay, we have two more songs and well, then we'll be all done and we'll get to do it again next week. All right, so for this third one, we're gonna do one of my new favorites. It's Psalm 119 verse 11. And that's one of the verses in your Bible in the book of Psalms. It's in, well, one, it's 119 verse 11. And I think it's been really fun to see the videos on Sunday of you guys learning the songs singing them, sending them in, and then letting us feature you on the following week's videos. So if you've learned the songs over the last few months, and well, you're getting pretty good at it and you wanna send in a video, have your mom or dad film you, send it in, and we'll, well, we'll put it up on the following week's video. So keep sending in your videos. All right, we're gonna do Psalm 119, verse 11. And if you don't know it, that's okay. Like I always say, practice, 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 and eventually you'll get it. All right. I store your word up in my heart so I won't sin against you. Psalm 119-11, let's sing that one more time. Uh, okay, I'll sing it one more time. I store your word up in my heart so I won't sin against you. Psalm 119-11, let's sing that one more time. Uh, okay, I'll sing that one more time. I store your word up in my heart so I won't sin against you. Psalm 119-11, let's sing that one more time. Uh, okay, I'll sing it again. I Come on, you gotta do it with me. I store your word up in my heart so I won't sin against you. Psalm 119-11, let's sing that one more time. All right, we can't sing it all day. That's the last one. We're gonna have to do it again next week. I hope you guys are enjoying that. Remember, keep practicing, practicing, and practicing, and eventually you'll get it. Okay, so for this last one, we are going to sing Nothing But The Blood. And also, this is one we've been doing the last, well, well, for a while. So if you've learned it, sing along, have your parents film it, and send it in. 
Oh, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Awesome job, everybody. Well, hey, we had so much fun singing with you today and having church with you today. And we cannot wait. We cannot wait to do it again next week. All right, everybody, have an awesome day. Bye. Here are some questions that you can talk about at home. What were the two disciples talking about as they walked, and why were they upset? What is your favorite Old Testament story, and how does it point to Jesus? How can we be a part of the story of Jesus? Thank you so much for joining us today. Before we head out, let's close together in prayer. Lord, Thank you for your word. Today we are so grateful that we have the Bible to look to when we are searching for you and that each and every story points to the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. We love you. Amen. All right, we'll see you next week.